Okay, where we left off yesterday, we were in the middle of talking about flux. We talked about flux is the volume of fluid that passes through a surface. It depends on three different factors, how fast the fluid is mo moving, how the surface is positioned. So we talked about if the flow is parallel to the surface, there's not going to be any flux because nothing is flowing through. Whereas the maximum flux is going to happen when the flow is perpendicular to the surface and the area of the surface. And we left off at the very end of class talking about how to calculate flux. As a reminder, I told you this is the symbol that I use for flux. I don't think your book does, though. This is the surface integral that you will see to denote flux. This is the first way to calculate it, which realistically to us becomes the double integral over the region D of F dot. We're going to replace N. N is what we did yesterday. So we said N was R of U cross R of V, but then we said that N was a unit vector. So you have to divide by the magnitude. And then here's what that ds becomes. ds becomes the magnitude ru cross with rv da. OK, so ultimately, where that gets us is that flux, which is the surface integral of f dot ds going to be the double integral over the region D. As you can see, these two magnitudes are going to cancel out. So we'll get F dotted with RU crossed with RV DA. OK, so let's do an example. We are going to find the flux. of the vector field f of x, y, z is equal to z, i, add y, j, add x, k, across the unit sphere, and the unit sphere is x squared, add y squared, Add z squared equals 1. OK, we're going to have to start by parameterizing our surface, surface being the unit sphere. So we've parameterized this multiple times by using spherical light coordinates. Whoever that is, put it on silent. R's, two of them? Seriously, guys? R is going to be terms in terms of phi and theta. So we're going to get sine of phi, cosine of theta, comma sine of phi, sine of theta, comma cosine of phi. We're going to need to take the two partials and cross them, which we've done before. So in this case, we're going to take r of phi and cross it with r of theta. So the derivative with respect to phi. We're going to get cosine phi, cosine theta. And then we're going to get cosine phi, sine of theta. And then negative sine of phi. And then we're going to take the derivative with, with respect to theta. So we're going to get negative sine of phi, sine of theta, sine of phi, cosine theta. And zero. Are you okay if I just tell you what the result ends up being, since we've done this multiple times? Ends up being sine squared phi cosine theta, comma sine squared phi sine of theta, and then sine of phi cosine theta. No, phi. Sorry, phi phi. Okay, this one, you don't need the magnitude. You're taking f and you're dotting it with that cross product. Now, f is in terms of x, y, and z. Instead, we need f to be in terms of phi and theta. So what we're going to do next is we're going to find f in terms of phi and theta. 
And whatever we get, we're going to dot that with R of B crossed with R of theta. Okay, so I have Z times I. Z is cosine phi. So this will be cosine phi. And then I have Y, which is sine of phi, sine of theta. And then I have X, which is sine of phi, cosine theta. Dotting that with the cross product, which is what we wrote above. So when we do that, we get cosine phi, sine squared phi, cosine theta. Add sine cubed of phi, sine squared of theta. Sine squared phi, cosine phi, cosine theta. That is ultimately going to be our integrand. So our flux now is the double integral of all of that. I'm going to integrate with respect to phi first and then theta. Phi is going to be from 0 to pi, and theta from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Okay. I really wish there was a nice way to do this. My suggestion to you would be to split it up into three separate integrals because then you're going to have a product of phi and then theta, a function of phi and then theta. You get what I'm saying? So for this first one, we would integrate from 0 to 2 pi, cosine of theta, d theta, and then 0 to pi, cosine phi, <laughs> sine squared phi, d phi. And then we would head from 0 to 2 pi, sine cubed phi, nope, sine squared theta, sorry, 0 to pi, sine cubed phi, d phi. Yeah, thank you. These are the same? Right, these two? Yeah. Okay, good, thank you, you saved us some work. Okay. Can you guys integrate all of these on your own? This one should be fine. This one's a U substitution. This one, double it, double angle. This one, one minus sine squared. Yeah. Okay. Can I just give us the answer then? So we're comfortable doing that on our own. Okay. Ends up being four pi over three. Okay, are you guys sure that I, that you're okay if I don't do it? Okay, because there is one last thing that we need to talk about. Yes, you're excited for what we're going to talk about next? It would have been just appropriate to say, yeah, Ms. Bowden, I'm really excited for what we're going to talk about next. 
Okay, we're gonna talk about how do you calculate flux if you have a non-parametric surface, or if you don't wanna make it a parametric surface. If it's non-parametric, let's say that you have some surface z is equal to some function of x and y, and that your surface is oriented upward. What you're going to do with that surface is move everything to one side. So you have z subtract g of x, y equals 0. We're going to call all of that big G of x, y, z. For n, then, we're going to use the following. Numerator is going to be negative z of x, negative z of y, and 1. That's just taking the derivative of g with respect to x, y, and z. Has to be a unit vector, though. Okay. This, though, numerator, that's the gradient of g. I just took the derivative with respect to x, y, and z. Denominator, then, is the norm of the gradient. So here's where that leads us. If your surface is oriented upwards, the integral will be the following. It'll be the surface integral of f dotted with negative z of x, negative z of y, and 1. So I guess S isn't really the best. Let's put a D there instead. So that's if your surface is oriented upwards. If it's oriented downwards, it's going to be D, or double integral, over D of F dotted with Z of X, Z of Y, negative 1, DA. Here's how I remember this personally. Upwards, there's a positive one. Because these signs are always going to be different, this, these signs compared to this one. Downwards, negative there, which means the other two are positive. So all you have to really remember is the sign. We're going to do one example, and then we'll be done with notes. Sound good? Evaluate surface integral of f dot ds, where f is the vector field y, x, z, and s is the boundary of the solid region E that is enclosed by z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and z equals 0. We are going to assume outward orientation. And for you to know, outward orientation is the convention. So I believe in your homework, sometimes you won't be told the orientation. If you're not told, convention is outward. So first thing I want us to do before we even do anything or before we set up any integrals is draw a picture. This is a non-parametric surface, so we're going to need to know if the surface is oriented upwards or downwards. Z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared. What is that? Yeah. 
is a downward parabola. Okay, so it starts at z equals 1. Something like this. Okay, few things for us to notice. First thing to notice is there's actually two surfaces here. The first surface is this paraboloid. And orientation is outward. This circle is our second surface. Again, orientation is outward. So we are actually going to have to set up two separate integrals. One for the first surface and one for the second surface. First surface we can see that this is oriented upwards. So we are integrating over surface 1 of f dot ds, which is going to become the double integral over the region d, which we'll figure out in a minute, of f. So f is y, x, z. So y, x, don't use z, though. for for z, we're going to put in the surface. So 1 minus x squared minus y squared dotted with oriented upwards. Oh, I think I'm going to run out of room. Means that is the positive one. So that means we're going to take the derivative with respect to x and y, but then switch their signs. So this one's positive. Those two have to be negative. So I get negative 2x, but switch the sign. Negative 2y, but switch the sign. So we get 2xy plus 2xy plus 1 minus x squared minus y squared dA. So this is the double integral over the region D of 1 plus 4xy minus x squared minus y squared. OK, suggestions. Well, first of all, what is our region D? So how are we going to figure out what the limits are? Huh? Yeah, so it's equal to 0. It's the figure in the xy plane in the circle. So do you have any suggestions for uh, making this integral a little easier? Polar. Yeah, we're going to switch this to polar. So this will be 1 plus 4r squared cosine theta sine theta minus r squared. Because we switch to polar, don't forget the extra r, and then dr d theta. r goes from 0 to 1, theta is from 0 to 2. Okay, we're fine integrating that, right? Can we split it up into two separate integrals? Definitely not. No. Okay, and we know why? Okay, ends up being pi over 2. Then we need another integral for the flux for surface 2. This one you should notice is oriented downwards. So it's going to be surface integral over surface 2 of f dot ds. So this will be the double integral over the region d of our vector field. So this vector field, the yx, yxz. So it's going to be yxz, though, is 0. That's the surface, z equals 0. Oriented downwards, so that's a negative 1. We need to take the derivative with respect to x and y. The surface, though, is z equals 0. So the derivative with respect to x is 0. The derivative with respect to y is 0, dA. So this one's really nice. We get 0 plus 0 plus 0. So that's just 0. Our final answer, then, is pi over 2.
Alex, can you open the door, please? So that's Flux. Any questions? 